Thank you very much, uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. The time is 11 o'clock in the morning. Let us now, I mean, we've already, uh, you know, done the National Assembly. The quorum required by Article 13 of the companies and articles, of the company's articles of association is two members present in person or proxy. Can the registrar confirm that the quorum has been formed? Good morning, Mr. Chairman, directors, and esteemed shareholders. My name is Bukola James Cole, and I represent United Securities Limited, registrar to Dangote Cement PLC. We have seven shareholders attending in person, and 279 shareholders attending by proxy, with a total of 15,448,745,768 shares, representing 90.66%. With this information, we confirm that the quorum has been duly formed. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. James Cole. The meeting is therefore duly convened and properly constituted. Accordingly, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to the 11th Annual General Meeting of our company, which I now declare open.
I wish to inform you that this meeting is being held by proxy further to the approval of the Corporate Affairs Commission and the Nigerian Stock Exchange. In addition, it is being streamed live for the benefit of our shareholders, regulators, and others who are not physically present. May I request Mr. Uh, I, uh, uh, Nona to please say the opening prayer. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father Lord, we want to thank you for today. In particular, we want to thank you for the gift of life. Life that we have also helped us accompany it with good health, hence our present here. Father, we also want to put the life of the company for whom we are gathered here also into your care. That Father, not only will you direct us, granting us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to be able to improve on our individual lives, that you also help us as persons to be able to help the company in which we've also invested in. This and many more we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Luna. There are seven items of business before you today. Uh, the Registrar of Directors, uh, you know, uh, uh, hold, shareholdings is available for inspection during the meeting in compliance with Section 275, Subsection 8 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act, CAPC 20, LFN 2004. Before we proceed to the more formal matters on the agenda, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce to you the directors of your company. I am uh, Ali Kodangote, the chairman of your company. On my left, I have Michelle Pachakos, your group managing director, and Mr. Olakule Alake, your non-executive director. On my right is Mr. Edward Emedene, the Deputy Company Secretary. And next to him is Mr. Emmanuel Ikazebo, your non-executive director. I would also like to introduce the Chairman of the Audit Committee, Mr. Robert Ade Odiachi. In view of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, our other directors, as well as the audit committee members, are joining the meeting virtually. Uh, we are here representing those, these directors, while the shareholders' representatives on the audit committee are represented by Mr. Ade Odiachi. Nevertheless, I would like to introduce them to you. The other directors are Mr. Ernest Ebi, Ms. Mr. Viswanathan Shankar, Sir Michael Davis, Mr. Duva Kumar Edwin, Mrs. Dorothy Ofot, SAN, Mrs. Sherry Blair, CBE, QC, Mr. Sani Dangote, Mr. Abdul Dangote, and Mr. Dred Zagoni. The other shareholders representatives on the audit committee are Mr. Nicholas Nyamali and Mr. Sharif Yusuf. I also introduce the representatives of the Securities and Exchange Commission, the Nigerian Stock Exchange Commission, Mr. Gostime Iwenekai, who is here with us, our joint auditors, Deloitte, Mr. Abraham Udenani, and Ahmed Zakari and Co. Mr. Kayode Lawa. Our registrars, United Securities Limited, Mrs. Bukola James Cole. The Corporate Affairs Commission had informed us that they would not be able to join the meeting physically, but will join us virtually. I would, like to, I, would, I would also like to introduce Mr. Goodluck Obi, representing KPMG, 
the professional services who are proposed for appointment as your new auditors to replace the ongo uh, outgoing joint auditors. I wish to also introduce the, uh, uh, the shareholders present who are also acting as proxies for the shareholders that, are not, uh, 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 that cannot be physically present due to pandemic. There are Sir Ngosu, Sonia Ngosu, Dr. Umar Farouk, Ms. Nona Awo, and Mrs. Bisi Bakari. I now call on the company secretary to read the notice of the meeting. Yes, sir. Hello. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, distinguished directors, and esteemed shareholders, ladies and gentlemen. The notice of the annual general meeting of Dangote Cement PSE. Notice is hereby given that the 11th annual general meeting of Dangote Cement PSE will hold on the 15th, on Monday, 15th, June 2020, at the Cote and Suit, Victoria Island, Lagos, at 11 a.m to transact the following business. Ordinary business, to receive the audited financial statement for the year ended 31st December 2019 and to report on the report of the directors, auditors, and the audit committee thereon to declare dividend, to elect and re-elect directors, to authorize the director to fix the remuneration of the, audit, of the auditors, to appoint KPMG professional services to replace the retiring auditors, to elect members to the statutory audit committee, special business, to consider and if thought fit, pass the following resolution as ordinary resolution of the company, to fix the remuneration of the directors. Note, preparation, in view of COVID-19 pandemic, the company has taken various steps to ensure the safety and attendance, as well as compliance with stated guidelines. This include the provision of sanitizers, masks and gloves at the bedding as well as the checking of temperature and ensuring that distance are well maintained. Proxy, in view of the COVID-19 pandemic, attendance at the meeting shall be only by proxy. A proxy form is attached to the annual report. A member has the right to appoint a proxy or proxies to attend the meeting and vote instead of him. The proxy or proxies needs not be a member of the company. All instruments of proxy must be deposited at the register office of the company at number one after arriving in Kohi, Kohi, Lagos, or at the office of the Registrar United Securities at number 10, Amod Wojokutu Street, Victoria Island, Lagos, not later than 48 hours before the time and of holding the meeting. All instruments of process shall be at the company's expense. A member entitled to attend a vote at the AGM is advised to select from the following process to attend and vote in his state. Alaji Aliko Dangote, GCON, Mr. Alakunle Alake, Emmanuel Kazebo, Mr. Michael Pochakos, Sasoni Uwosu, Dr. Uma Farouk, Mr. Nona Awo, and Bisi Bakari. Closure of register. The notice is hereby given that the register of member of the Register of member and transfer books of the company will be closed on May 26, 2020. Payment of dividend. If the dividend recommended by the director is approved by the shareholder at the annual general meeting, dividend will be paid on Wednesday 17, 2020 to the shareholders, whose name are registered in the company register of member at the close of business on May 25, 2020. E dividend registration. Notice is hereby given to all shareholders to open bank accounts, brokering accounts, and C CSCS account for the purpose of receiving dividend payment electronically. A detachable e mandate action act activation form, which is available on the company website, is attached to the annual report to ensure all shareholders furnish particulars of the account to the registrar. Nomination of the audit committee. In accordance with section 395, subsection 5 of the Company and Allied Matter Act, a shareholder may nominate another shareholder for appointment as member of the audit committee by giving notice to the company secretary at least 21 days before the annual general meeting. 
right of security holder to ask question. Security holder have the right to ask question, not only at the general meeting, but also to write prior to the meeting. Questions should be submitted to the company secretary at the company register office up to two days before the date of the annual general meeting. This meeting shall be streamed online on the company website, Facebook page of the company, as well as YouTube page of the company, by order of the board of directors, company secretary. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Moedemihe. Uh, it is necessary to draw the attention of shareholders to the measures we have taken as a responsible corporate citizen due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. In compliance with the federal and state directives, the number of people present at this meeting is within the limit of 20. In addition, we have taken several precautionary steps, including the provision of sanitizers, masks, and gloves at the venue, as well as checking of temperatures and ensuring social distancing between attendees. Before we move to item one on the agenda, let me present to you the chairman's statement uh, you know, uh, uh, chairman's statement contained on pages eight to nine in the annual report and accounts already circulated. Do you agree that we take it uh, as read? Okay, thank you so much, distinguished uh, shareholders. Uh, we will now move to item one on the agenda. As I'm sure that you all agree, you have had the reports and accounts for the period ended 31st December 2019 for the statutory period, uh, for the required statutory period. I would now like to formally lay before the meeting annual reports of the accounts, including the audited financial statements for the year ended 31st December 2019, together with the reports of the directors, uh, auditors, and audit committee thereof. I now ask the representatives of the auditors to read the reports of the auditors, which is on page 139 to 141 of the annual reports and accounts. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I would like to stand <coughs> on the existing protocols. The Independent Auditors, Joint Auditors Report is found on pages 139 through 141. And please permit me to read certain paragraphs of this report. Report on the audit of the consolidated and separate financial statement. We have audited the our company consolidated and, and separate financial statement of Dangote Cement PLC and its subsidiaries, which comprise the consolidated and separate statement of financial position as at 31st December 2019, the consolidated and separate statement of profit or loss, comprehensive income, changes in equity, cash flows for the year then ended. The notes to the consolidated and separate financial statement, including a summary of significant accounting policies. In our opinion, the consolidated and separate financial statements give a true and fair view of the consolidated and separate financial position of Dangote Cement PLC as at 31st December 2019, and the consolidated and separate financial performance and statement of cash flows for the year then ended in accordance with international financial reporting standards. The Companies and Allied Matters Act, CAP C20, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria, 2004, and the Financial Reporting Council of Nigerian Act 2011. We conducted our audit in accordance with international standards on auditing. Our responsibilities under those standards are further described in our auditor's responsibility for the audit of the consolidated and separate financial statement section of our report. We are independent of the group in accordance with the requirements of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria of Nigeria Professional Code of Conduct and Guide for Accountants, the ICANN Code, and other independent requirements applicable to performing audits in, of financial statements in Nigeria. 
we have fulfilled our other ethical responsibilities in accordance with the ICANN code and in accordance with other ethical requirements applicable to performing audits in Nigeria. The ICANN code is consistent with International Ethics Standard Board for Accountants Code for Ethics for Professional Accountants Parts A and B. We believe that the audit evidence we have obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our opinion. Please turn with me to page 141. Report on other legal and regulatory requirements. In accordance with the sixth schedule of the Companies and Allied Matters Act, CAP C20 LFN 2004, we expressly state that we have obtained all the information and explanation which to the best of our knowledge and belief we are necessary for the purpose of our audit. The group and company have kept proper books of account so far as appears from our examination of those books. The group and company's financial position, statement of profit or loss, and other com and comprehensive income are in agreement with the books of accounts and returns. Signed by myself, Abraham Udenani, and Olukayode Lawal from Deloitte and Tush and Ahmed Zakare and Co. respectively. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Udenani. Uh, in accordance with the provision of Section 359, Subsection 6 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act, CAMA, CAP C20 LFN 2004, the Audit Committee duly carried out their duties as required on the accounts for the period ended 31st December 2019. I now ask the Chairman of the Audit Committee, Mr. Robert Ade Odiachi, to read the Audit Committee report, which is on page 136 of the Annual Reports and Accounts. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd like to and existing protocols. Report of the Statutory Audit Committee. In accordance with Section 3596 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act, Cap C20, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004, and Section 30.4 of the SEC Code, the members of the Statutory Audit Committee of Dangote Cement PLC hereby report as follows. We have exercised our statutory functions under Section 3596 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act, CAP C20 LFN 2004, and we acknowledge the cooperation of the board, management, and staff in the conduct of these responsibilities. After careful consideration of the report of the external auditors, we accepted the report that the financial statements gave a true and fair view of the state of the group's financial affairs as of 31st December 2019. We confirm that the accounting and reporting policies of the group are in accordance with legal and regulatory requirements as well as agreed ethical practices. We reviewed the scope and planning of audit requirements and found them adequate. We reviewed the findings on the management letter prepared by the external auditors and found management responses to the findings satisfactory. The accounting and internal control system is constantly and effectively being monitored through an effective internal audit function. We made recommendations to the board on the appointment of KPMG, professional services, to replace the retiring auditors, Deloitte and Tuch, and Ahmed Zakari and Co. <clears throat> we also made recommendations on the remuneration of the external auditors for the financial year ended 31st December 2019, and reviewed the provision made in the financial statements for the remuneration of the external auditors. And lastly, we considered that the external auditors are independent and qualified to perform their duties effectively. The committee therefore recommends that the audited financial statements for the year ended 31st December 2019, and the external auditors' report thereon be presented for adoption at this annual general meeting. <clears throat> Signed by me, Robert Ade, 
Odiachi, Chairman, on behalf of members of the Statutory Audit Committee. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Robert Ade Odiachi. I will be pleased to answer questions which you may have on the reports and uh, accounts uh, before we proceed to the next item of the business. Are there any questions before the motion is put to uh, the meeting? Yeah, busy. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, directors here present, regulatory authorities, my co shareholders, good morning. My name is Mrs. B.C. Bakari, Chairwoman. First and foremost, Mr. Chairman, I will go straight to page four of the annual report and account, where we have combination of our annual report with sustainability report for the first time. This is highly commendable, Mr. Chairman. Uh, on that note, I will go straight to page 63. Page 63. On this page, that is a social investment spending. The breakdown is on page 227 to 230. The total on the social investment spending is 1.1 billion. Mr. Chairman, this is highly commendable, as this will definitely ensure strong relationship with our local communities across everywhere our company operates, leading to the creation of a conducive environment to our business to thrive. But we can still do more on food. Uh, I have like four or five questions. My first question is, is on page 7 of the annual report and account where we have types of operations. Mr. Chairman, I don't know why the percentage figure for our market share in South Africa is not on display, why we indicate for Nigeria and other eight African countries where we are operating from during the year under review. The one for uh, South Africa is not there. On page 52, sir, revenue from this country, I mean South Africa, brought in 46.8 billion, despite its economic challenge and the significance of its market for cement. My question on this is on the carbon tax introduced around June last year in this country, which we make our company to cover out about 40 million South Africa land. Based on the amount of carbon emissions from our cement production in the country, what steps is our company taking to arrest this situation that will make us to be paying this huge amount yearly if the carbon emissions remain or grow further? Secondly, what efforts are we putting in place to get a cheaper and friendly alternative fuel source in place of our reliance on carbon fuel sources, using the story of uh, Dangote, Ethiopia, as a yastic on page 72. Page 60. Okay. Page 68. Not discrimination. Mr. Chairman, the mechanism and open door policy put in place to address reported grievances is commendable. Ghana and Syria alone did not witness any reported grievances during the year under, under review. This is highly commendable. Going by the statistic, Mr. Chairman, South Africa has the highest number of grievances. I want to know if most of these grievances are not xenophobic in nature, and what has been the success rate in the resolution of these grievances. Again, Mr. Chairman, I want to ask, what is the outlook of projected cement sales in view of fight to reduce the spread of coronavirus pandemic in this country? Uh, again, Mr. Chairman, 
Recently, our company embarked on a planned buyback of share of 1.7 billion shares as it was approved by we shareholders at our extraordinary general meeting early this year. Sir, what is the outcome of the buyback and how far has it boost our working capital in the first quarter of 2020? That, that will also take me to page 92, financial position. Mr. Chairman, we have a negative working capital where our current liabilities exceed the current assets. I want to know how we are addressing this in terms of meeting up with our short-term obligations and ends meet without necessarily being oh, On which page? Page 92, mm. financial position. Our current liability exceed the current assets. So I want to know how we are addressing it in terms of meeting up with our short-term obligation and next meet without necessarily really being in deeper depth. Lastly, Mr. Chairman, what is the status of the Pernal Tax Extension application with NIPC of the three lines, namely IBC line two and three and Obajano line four? Thank you for the invitation to this COVID uh, prosy AGM. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, BC. Okay, can I answer on or you? Okay. Okay, go ahead. I should answer this one first. Okay. Anything? Sonny? Mr. Chairman of Dakota event, allergy. Alaji Aliko Mohammed, CON, distinguished directors, and uh, very distinguished shareholders that we are representing here today. My name is Sasani Wosu, National Coordinator Emeritus Independent Shareholders Association of Nigeria. Mr. Chairman, before I start my comment, I'd like to welcome Michelle. Uh, we, we are now welcoming Michelle two times in Nigeria. We welcome Michelle when he came to Nigeria on the other side. Where I'm also welcoming Michelle here in Nigeria in Dankote Cement. Michelle, welcome. We hope to see the magic you are going to play here. You recall in those days, we were talking about our competitor. That you have to walk towards ensuring that you give competition to our competitor. But now, you have moved to the competitor that we are working to catch up with. So we see the magic you are going to do. And I think Dankote Cement have been lucky. The immediate past managing director was also a product of the other competitor. And he came, he united, he unites this place to beat the competitor. So he worked very well. We applauded him and he left. You too, it is also your time to apply whatever magic that you have not applied the other side to ensure the growth here. And just like the last speaker who spoke about South Africa, you remember it was an issue from the other side where you came from. And eventually we wrestled you and your team to make, apply a reverse gear. And I hope you will help this one 
to ensure that it doesn't fall into the same problem where you came from, fell into about South Africa. It's very important for Aliko and the board to understand what I am talking about. Because we are shareholders, you are managers, and you may not see what we have seen. And from this kind of platform, you understand what we are saying. So when there is any moment for you to look back, you will remember what a shareholder or shareholder said at this 11th annual JIRA meeting. 11th is so synonymous to me because it's my bad day, but not 11th of June. So, um, again, I want to talk about the external auditors. I watch very careful and listen very careful when the external auditor was reading his report. And I want to tell external auditors, at the AGM, your responsibility is to the shareholders. And anything you want to do, you seek permission from the shareholders. Not that you take us for a ride and say, follow me to so 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 page. It's never done. It's never done. You people should learn and learn fast how to respect those that you are reporting to. Your reporting ends with them the moment you come here to present your report to the shareholders. Please be mindful of that. Now, um, I want to take the chairman to page 75. Page 75. BC has done a lot of work on some of these things. But on page 75, Mr. Chairman, there you told us there is no production in Goku. That there is no production in Goku. And there is need for us to know why there is no production in Goku. Also very important to know is that you said in Cameroon, in Ghana, and in Sierra Leone, there are no clean. Clean is important in producing cement. Why are there no clean there? It means without the clean, there will be no production. So we need a clarity on this. On page 118, 118, we have a lot of money hanging there as on claim. At this time of economic difficulties, Mr. Chairman, there is need for the company secretary and the registrars to, I mean, the company secretary and the registrars to do more in ensuring that the shareholders will be able to get their money. At this time, where things are very, very difficult, it is very important. If you look at there, they are telling us that we have 3 billion, 394,000, no, no, 3 billion, 3 billion, yeah. Almost 3.5 billion naira outstanding there. I didn't hear that. That is unclaimed dividend. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Unclaimed mm. dividend. Unclaimed dividend. In this era, I was having an interview and somebody said, why can't we use unclaimed dividend? to sort out the issue of coronavirus. I was really mad about that. And I said, unclaimed dividend belong to people. Okay. There are a lot of people that have donated to coronavirus, which the government have not even bothered to give account of. They should go and use that. But what I'm saying here now is that the company secretary's office and the registrars should do more in enlightening the people that they have 3.5 billion naira to collect so that with that 
the money will be going down. It will not be attractive to the hawks outside there. It's very, very important that we should do something about that. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, I also want us to look at the, uh, the report of the audit committee. In that report, the audit committee did not meet as much as they ought to meet. Whether it's an omission or anything, but it's very important. The corporate governance recommends that audit committee should meet four times in a year. As the directors are meeting on quarterly basis, they should also be meeting in order to review the account that the directors are reviewing. So they are the nearest people to us. They are the nearest people to us, they are our representative. And therefore, we want to make sure that they are abreast with what is going on in the company. The carbon emission that Mrs. Bakari talked about is very, very important. And Michelle will also understand that something, Michelle, that something was done in a Wekoro about this. Something was done in a Wekoro in order to gather it. So it is important that such an experience should also be imparted to the board of Dangote Cement so that we won't have a problem on those ones. Because that also will be a waste conduit if we start to pay uh, South Africa people for all these things, money that ordinarily would have come and contribute to the position of the company. Mr. Chairman, I want the company secretary of Dankote to look into Kama, what Kama says, when you have more expenses or you have a, a, what Mrs. Bakari described in her contribution, it's an accounting function. And it means that the shareholders, when it becomes in that form, the shareholders must be called to inform them this is the position of the company so that if we need to bring in more money to it, we bring in more money. It's uh, it is a regulatory exercise on that issue. Then again, let me also add my voice to what she said about share buyback. Mr. Chairman, you recall that on that day, I was here too and you gave me opportunity to speak. I was saying that share buyback is as good as giving money to your shareholders. The issue is that it's going to be on prorata basis. Anybody that is holding 100 shares must also sell the percentage which we are selling as a company. It goes round. It's not limited to anybody. I tried to call the uh, uh, financial advisor that day to tell him that what he told us here was not the way share buyback should look like. I and Independent, Independent Shareholders Association pioneered the issue of share buyback. And we have the experience because we got six uh, experts from six continents. And Emmanuel was there on that day. He was, we invited him as a special guest at the seminar which we held in Nikon uh, Transcourt uh, Hotel in Abuja. It's an experience. And when you want more information on this, we will be willing to give you that information free of charge so that we will do the right thing. Nigeria Stock Exchange tried to do it, but they did not do it rightly. Ask your director, he's aware of it. You don't say people should bring in their shares as a share buyback. If you are, if you are buying back 10%, it cut across everybody. That's the way share buyback. And Ghana, with less than 30 companies in their stock exchange, practice share buyback in the best form of it that everybody benefited. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> I would like to appreciate the former managing director of Dankote Cement, Joe Makojo, for the services he has rendered to this company and to shareholders. 
and for the kind of person he is. We would like to place on record, on behalf of shareholders, our appreciation for the services he rendered. While I have welcomed Michelle into the system, we believe that whatever is the situation, with time, that we will overcome the problems and continue to enjoy whatever we're enjoying in the marketplace. The fact remains that there is a lot of need for our product because of the deficit in housing uh, 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 plan, the climate or the housing uh, uh, area provision in this country. Definitely, cement will continue to be used for these things. And for you, who they listening to, I hope you will make the government to also realize that this is the right time for them to close the gap in deficit of housing in this country so that the poor masses will have a roof over them. Once again, I'd like to welcome you and thank you very much for inviting me to this meeting and for holding forth as a very humble person in this country and in the world. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak at this AGM. I've already passed some issues to the company secretary that I should pass to you on this. There is no, no need wasting too much time in this since you have the papers over there. God bless all of us. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay. No. The chairman, other members of the board, both in person and visual, very distinguished fellow shareholders, including those of them who are not here that we also represent. Mr. Chairman, I must confess that uh, I wasn't sure as to what I should do at this meeting. Uh, though I was certain that my responsibility is to come in here and ask questions as to what you have done for the year ended 31st of December 2019. Uh, and one of the things I do realize, having gotten this account, is that first I must start by thanking the company for providing very detailed accounts. Uh, and the reason I'm thanking the company is simple. For everybody and anybody who does investment in equity, what is basically investing in is investing in information and knowledge. And once you don't have that information, uh, your ability to also understand the company that you've invested in uh, becomes relatively difficult. So I want to thank you for the quantity and quality of information that I have in this annual account, just like we've seen uh, in previous years. But having said that, I am not too certain uh, why you will be wanting the dividend to be paid not tomorrow, but the day after. Uh, because increasingly, the trend that you're also finding in the market is that in very many instances, the, the dividend is even paid on the day of approval. Yes, I know you don't need as much money as the other minority shareholders, but I think that this dividend should be paid latest tomorrow, not a day after tomorrow, uh, so that people can begin to take responsibilities uh, from the benefit uh, that they have also made in the company. So that's the first observation that I want to make. But having made that observation, it's also important that I point the board's attention to what I am finding. Uh, if you look at page 205 to 207, and you compare the company to the group, uh, yes, I know that some of the plants are young. I also know that looking at page 48 to 59, some of them also had challenges in the year under review. Uh, and if you then extend that further to page 90 to 93, uh, again begins to give you the understanding as to uh, what the subsidiaries are doing vis-a-vis -vis the company. But a quick one, 
In 2015, the non-Nigerian business made a loss of, 50, of 25 million. By 2016, that figure had gone to 163 million. And by 2017, a major drop, uh, a loss of less than 30 million. Um, but by 27, 2018, that figure went to over 91 million. Yes, I know that there is also a drop in the year to about 61 million billion loss. And that basically then directs my attention as to what is it that we can do differently. First, I do realize the fact that we have problem with uh, Sierra Leone and um, Ghana in terms of the quality and probably the quantity of limestone and available, and that's why we don't have uh, a production plant in the real sense in those two countries. But I'll be asking, uh, as a way of making up for some of the challenges that we have as a company, are we expecting that Côte d'Ivoire, uh, 1.5 billion, 1.5 million plants uh, will be completed at the end of this year? Uh, because the reason I ask that is that other than uh, Nepal, uh, which also we didn't have information as to what exactly is happening in that country, uh, when we expect that expansion program should also be on in Zambia, uh, so as Zambia will be able to look at the needs, the cement needs of Angola and probably Democratic Republic of Congo. So what is that we're likely to be doing with Zambia? That will be important for me. For Senegal, Senegal also has the possibility of pushing sales in Guinea, Mauritania, and also Mali. Uh, are we doing anything in that country as a way of also pushing uh, our volume and by extension being able to push the revenue? And I'm sure that will also trickle down uh, to the bottom line. So what are we doing or what are we likely to do in Senegal? In Congo, I am also expecting that there will be some activity around the expansion in Congo. And the reason I ask this is that, again, uh, there is possibility of opportunities in South Sudan. Uh, because, again, if we don't begin to take position now, uh, the chances is that other persons will take position. And when you are a latecomer in any business, your ability to struggle uh, also becomes higher. Tanzania, I'm not too sure what we're doing, but I will be asking. Yes, like I said, I've had the issue of problems in uh, Tanzania, uh, but what is it that we're doing around, again, talking about the future, dust emission? Yes, South Africa has already opened our eyes to the possibility. Uh, should a Nigerian government or any of the other African countries also begin to look at emission? Uh, do we have policies in place, uh, again talking about the environment, as indicated on page 75? On page 67, I want us to take advantage of the information on that page uh, so we can have a balance between age and experience. Yes, I know that globally, uh, the older you are, uh, the higher your chances of remaining in the cement business. But I think that as a continent, and given your, the, the presence of our company in a number of African countries, we should begin to look at how we drive that balance between experience, exposure, and age. Uh, because if we don't begin to make effort uh, as to how to find the best of hands in running that business, that also will become a challenge in the long run. Yes, Michel is here. If Michel didn't have an opportunity in his own country, much younger in his life, he probably won't be here. And the same thing for some of the top executives. So let's begin to put in programs that will also help to expose young persons so that before they become uh, that old, and like some of us with plenty of gray hairs, they probably will have taken position, uh, executive position, to be also be able to help uh, our long-term growth. 
I also will be hoping that there will be some talk around power and energy. And the reason I also ask this is that if you look at the climate of the world, uh, one major advantage we have is the length of sunshine in Africa. And if we have that length of sunshine, uh, rather than some of the form of uh, energy that we're currently looking at now, uh, it may be necessary for us to also begin to look at alternates uh, in terms of energy source. So I'll be hoping that there'll be talk around, uh, because if you look at what is on page 168, uh, energy is a major cost in our production. Yes, I do recognize that because globally, energy is also a major cost in terms of production. Fortunately for us, we are not doing wet uh, manufacturing, but even at that, I think there are some things that we can do uh, going forward in having to drive down uh, that figure. Mr. Chairman, uh, I think that before I end, uh, it would be proper to thank Fidelis and Brian uh, for their contribution to this company. But much more important, I think that we should also extend our appreciation uh, to the family of uh, Joe Makuju. Uh, because for almost 10 years, we kidnapped Joe as a company without uh, asking the family to pay ransom. But now that we have returned him to his family, uh, I think we should also thank the family. Uh, so that other persons who will be in the position of Joe, uh, who also have their families, release them to companies. Because as a nation and as a continent, the more of very resourceful person that we have that will help us to drive our businesses, the better for us. Yes, we have Mike today, like I keep saying, uh, because he's present here. But there are quite a number of companies, as far as Africa is concerned, who will have done better if we're able to uh, have persons who have the ethics, business ethics, being clean, and also being knowledgeable. Uh, because if you have a knowledgeable but an unclean uh, manager, then we also have a problem. So the more that we encourage such persons, uh, the better for us. However, Mr. Chairman, I also will have expected, with due respect to the audit committee, uh, that their recommendation to have a new auditor should have also included a smaller audit firm, uh, joint audit. Yes, I know this has its own challenges, but if we don't also encourage small players uh, to grow in this industry. What we'll continue to have is a situation where the big sizes will continue to dominate. And whether we want it or not, big sizes will, uh, concentration risk also is a challenge. So let's begin to look at the possibility of having to have small Nigerian companies, small African country, uh, companies who, can, who are of standard in terms of auditing uh, going forward uh, to also be a player in the business that we do. On a final note, Mr. Chairman, I want to say that given the time we are in and given that we have present currently in about 24 companies, if I'm correct, and given that two major assets of this company is man and earth, I will be urging you as chairman, uh, and given the privileged position you which you are in, and privileges are one that we must also make sure that other persons benefit from. But one major area that I will want you to also look at going forward, again as a fallout of COVID, is that it will be important that you look, that is when I talk of you, now I'm talking about Dangote Cement. Don't forget I mentioned being present in 24 African countries. It will be important that we ask ourselves as a company, which are the five biggest killers in terms of diseases in Africa, and see how we can support to make sure that there are less and less Africans who are dying from those diseases, especially those diseases that don't have international support to the way and level that we should have it. But even at that, Mr. Chairman, I also think that if you look at developments in Africa, uh, including Nigeria, one major challenge that we have today is the issue of deforestation. And I don't think that itself will not be 
a second leg of area that we should be looking at. Because, by the way, the more of replanting of forests that we do, uh, the chances is that the air that we'll breathe will be better. Uh, the chances are higher that the number of persons who can be engaged uh, in those businesses will be higher, which also means that there will be some level of incentive uh, to young persons. Uh, because each time, for instance, I hear some of our governors talking, oh, we are returning the Amadjuris to, and some of us laugh. Because if all they will have is to have pilot scheme and make sure that those young boys uh, have a situation where they are just concentrating one or two local governments and their emphasis is, oh, how do we reforest uh, this location for the benefit of mankind? I think we'll also have a better result. So I'll be urging you, again, given the role and position that you are in, let's start some pilot scheme and let's begin to see how we give back to Earth some of the things that we're already taking from Earth in terms of excavation. Yes, I know that you have uh, uh, limestone sites rehabilitation center, but I think that that, for me, will be a major contribution to Africa and, by extension, a major contribution to mankind. It's on that note that I want to thank the company uh, for inviting me to represent other shareholders who are not here, and I'm also hoping that for other shareholders who are not here, uh, that our presentation uh, also will be one that they will consider good enough uh, for the for their own absence in terms of driving the fortune and the future of this company, uh, God granting life. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, uh, Nonao. Well, thank you, uh, distinguished shareholders. I think uh, I've listened to all the points that you have raised, and uh, I thank you for the advice that you've given. Uh, but some of the questions I will answer. The advice will take them on board and uh, we'll discuss them as we go on with our normal businesses in the company. The, I think it is an omission, uh, not that we don't know our market share in South Africa, but if you look at that year's report, you know, it was there. So I assure you, 2020 report will put the number of our market share, you know, uh, in South Africa, but we are not really doing very bad in terms of uh, volume of business. Uh, the carbon emission we are doing quite uh, a lot, but if you look at it really in terms of carbon e emission in Nigeria and most of other countries we are doing extremely very well. The new regulation that they brought in South Africa is totally different, but we are also managing that and uh, you see it in our next uh, annual you know, report. It's just that you know our report is very, very detailed and whatever uh, happen, we always report to shareholders. The non-discriminatory, uh, non-discrimination uh, in South Africa, you know, it is, it may be reported uh, things, but we really don't have any issue both with the government or with the community. You know, all our issues so far uh, is been uh, sorted. We don't have uh, any uh, issues. BC raised the issue of uh, uh, you know, uh, debt to equity ratio. If you look at our debt to equity ratio, actually just even now that we have taken something, but our debt to equity ratio is less than 18%, you know, which is extremely very good. You need to, basically you need to look at that report and read it well. You know, I think you must have read it wrongly. Uh, we are very, very cash liquid company because if we uh, if we have more debt than assets, then we won't be able to pay 276 billion as dividend. And, uh, you know, so have a look at it and see. The uh, sales during pandemic, sales during pandemic, yes, we're doing our best under the current circumstances, you know, because there was quite a lot of uh, lockdowns especially uh, more or less here in Nigeria and in South Africa, where, yes, we lost some uh, volume in the month of uh, April. It improved in uh, May, and uh, it's also improving a lot in, uh, you know, June. So we believe that uh, we're not going to do 
too bad in terms of maybe second quarter. But you know, the pandemic is an ongoing thing. It's not that it has gone. It's still around with us, and we pray that it will uh, leave us very soon. Um, the share buyback, which uh, BC talked about, yes, we've gotten already the approval, uh, you know, for the share buyback, you know, finally from uh, SEC, you know, after the court ordered uh, this, you know, uh, uh, this thing that we went through, it has been done. But in terms of what also Sony raised, because Sir also raised an issue about, you know, how the share buyback it is. You know, share buyback, Sir Sony, is something very new in Nigeria. I think we're the first company to have gotten this, uh, you know, share buyback. We're well, the second. Okay. Okay, sorry. So if we are the second, I think the your own interpretation and maybe the interpretation of other people might be different, but I mean, you are a well-known person to us and you can always discuss with our finance uh, guys as to how uh, the share buyback, you know, is going to, uh, you know, happen. If there's share buyback, for example, we as Dongote might not be interested in selling our shares. But any other director who, any other shareholder who wants to sell his shares, fine. You know, so I think that one we need to sit down, iron the, uh, you know, iron uh, those, uh, you know, issues. <clears throat> you talk about also the, uh, the uh, you know, production, no production in uh, Boko. That's true, there's no production in Boko. The reason is that in Boko, you know, we have, uh, we are building a power plant which is going to be a coal-based power plant to reduce our cost in terms of production because we are using low foil oil. But then also when you look at it, we have excess capacity. So if we have excess capacity, it does not make sense for us to operate from three plants, one of which is uh, Boko and is more expensive to produce. So unless we are able to bring our costs down. But right now, we're addressing those issues. I'm sure you must have seen in the uh, news that we have, uh, you know, we have uh, started our first shipment of clinker to Senegal. Uh, in Senegal, we have actually exhausted our capacity. So, but we have more of grinding, so that's why we're taking clinker there. But you know, we're also producing our local clinker. It's just that we need to expand more capacity. Uh, Senegal market for us, yes, is a very, very good, uh, you know, market. So that's why we have to send in more cement. And as we speak, hopefully by end of uh, this month or beginning of July, we'll start also shipping from here to uh, Cameroon and other areas where we need a uh, clinker. And that will also, uh, you know, uh, will make me to answer your question as to why we don't have kill in Ghana and Cameroon. Ghana and Cameroon, we don't have kilns there because they don't have the uh, limestone. Unless you have a limestone, you cannot produce cement. But Cameroon has porcelana, which you can add up to about 40%, and we have it, we have the mining rice, we are mining there. So we only take Kilinka and then we do the other uh, process. <coughs> the unclaimed dividend, well, definitely this one, uh, it doesn't benefit anybody if the money keeps sitting there. And I think, uh, you know, our company secretariat with the registrars will work to see how people will come and claim their dividend. You know, because it's not money that you can give away. There are people who, are, who, who own that one, but maybe some of them that are dead, I don't really know, you know, what happened. But it doesn't benefit anybody for 3.39 billion to sit down in an account where nobody is claiming the money. You know, we would love that uh, the shareholders will claim their dividend so that, you know, everybody will uh, move on. The other issue, Sasoni, you uh, raised about audit committee. No, audit committee, they actually met four times and the register is here. You know, they have met, uh, they met four times and when we, finish even now as we you know as we are going on with the listen 
you can come and have a look at it with the company secretary. They are very, very responsible and definitely, uh, you know, somebody like, uh, you know, Robert Ade Odiachi will not allow us to rest. So anytime when there is uh, a quarterly account, they always sit. And I'm sure there are meetings, when you check the records of the meeting, it is very exhaustive. But it is good that uh, the chairman is here, the register is here, you can check and see the, uh, this thing, you know. So uh, uh, then, <coughs> Nona, how you raise the issue about, we normally, uh, I mean about, uh, why are we paying uh, dividend on Wednesday? Uh, well, it might be an omission, I don't know really what happened, but we always pay dividend the day of our AGM. Always, if you check the record, most of the times, once we finish the AGM, people will receive their money, worst case, the next day. So uh, exercise some patience, I'm sure, Tuesday and Wednesday, you only have a delay of 24 hours. So I think 24 hours will not uh, kill you, but next time, as soon as we finish the AGM, once you approve, we pay the next day. You know, it won't be, we pay, you know, in two days' time. So you receive your, uh, this in. <clears throat> in uh, Cote d'Ivoire, yes, hopefully we'll finish the uh, plant, you know, by uh, end of this year, early next year. You know, which, yes, it will serve the market. It is a growing market, and I hope, you know, it will uh, serve us uh, well. Uh, you also talk about uh, the Zambia market. Zambia market, when we open up in Zambia, is for Zambia to be able to supply to Labambushi, which is part of uh, Congo DRC. But you know, they've been having some few uh, issues of which I think, uh, you know, DRC has not been stable for a while, but once there's stability, uh, will be able to export from there. Likewise, our plant in Congo, Brazzaville, we build that plant to supply to Gabon. Gabon don't have, uh, you know, limestone. So the natural uh, market for Congo, Brazzaville is to take to the other side of, uh, you know, I mean, Gabon and also part of it to, you know, uh, to uh, uh, Angola. But Angola, they have enough cement, so I don't think if we need to, you know. One of the things that we have, we're not very far away also from the port, but we're in discussion with the government to see how they can reduce their toll, because uh, going to the uh, port, there is a toll, and the toll, uh, I think, was built by a Chinese company that are charging almost about six, seven dollars a ton for us to pass. So I think that is an issue which we need to work on because if you look at also the Congo plant, Congo plant who built it, not only serve Congo market, but also to serve part of DRC, which is Kinshasa. It's just water across. <clears throat> so hopefully by the time we resolve those uh, issues, you know, I mean, investing in several African countries is not really that uh, easy. You know, it's not, I mean, it's easier said than done but uh, I'm sure we will get a lot of uh, benefit from that. And sometimes, also answering your question, why you see that yes, sometimes maybe we don't make money, that we lose money, because the money, those plants, they are owing, they are owing money in dollars. Even though the dollars is not belonging to a bank, it's belonging to the parent company here. So any time when there is devaluation there, we have to take a hit, you know? So that's one of the uh, issues, you know? But I mean, going forward, I think majority of them operationally in terms of EBITDA, we are not doing very, very bad. You know, I think our result last year was one of the best, right? Yeah. And uh, you talk about management training. Yes, we have a management training. We have a, even a training school in uh, Obajana where we train technicians and we definitely were training, uh, you know, people to make sure that, uh, you know, uh, we continuously train our own uh, people. Energy cost, yes, is one of the areas 
that uh, were paying a lot of attention. But please, when you check our own accounts, you see that despite whatever that somebody will say, we are actually the cheapest in terms of energy uh, cost in production. But I'm not saying that no, we are now working day and night to make sure that yes, we cut down our energy cost. So uh, that's, you know, what it is. Yes, we discussed before about this joint uh, uh, auditors. We, we didn't really take a joint, uh, you know, audit, but that is a decision that maybe the board might look into it going uh, forward. I mean, we are also a local African company, you know, and uh, we'll continue to support uh, local uh, growing, I mean, upcoming companies, you know, and uh, we'll do our best. So I think that's, uh, I hope I've answered most of the questions that you have raised. Uh, you know, if, uh, since there are no more other questions, can we, uh, shall, I mean, we shall now proceed. There are seven items, uh, there are seven agenda items to be deliberated on today. I hereby call on uh, item one to six on the agenda pursuant to section 224, subsection one, Companies and Allied Matters Act 1990. Therefore, voting for the resolutions in respect of each agenda item will be carried out electronically. Each shareholder has been given a voting device and results will be displayed online for all those attending virtually to, uh, to view. Please note that there are, uh, there are all ordinary resolutions. Each resolution requires 50% of the total votes cast in order to be passed. I will now invite the registrar to provide explanation. Yes. Special business here, that's item seven. If not, I think we maintain status quo on that okay. and do the other things. Yes, we got the approval of the CSC. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. we got we got the approval of the CSC. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll proceed to explain the procedure for casting your votes using the devices provided. Please be informed that we have captured the voting details for 279 shareholders received by proxy and holding 15 billion 417 million 387,965 units for Dangote Cement PLT shares, which represents 90.47% of the fully paid up share capital. In addition to the proxies received, we will be capturing the votes of the shareholders physically present at this meeting to arrive at the final voting results. You have been assigned a voting device that will be configured to represent your shareholding in Dangote Cement PLC. On your voting part, the button 1 slash A is for a yes vote, and the button 2 slash B is for a no vote. Any other button selected will not be recorded. Once the voting has commenced, please press the reference button in accordance with your decision or choice and note that each shareholder can change their votes during the voting period. But once the voting period has ended, the last button you pressed will be recorded as your votes. Closing of the voting session will be announced and the result will be displayed as well as read out. Thank you. 279 proxies. Thank you very much, Mrs. James Cole. Uh, the first res uh, resolution is in respect of the audited financial statements. Are there any questions before the motion is put to the meeting? Since there are no further questions, we shall proceed. Would a shareholder kindly move that the annual reports and accounts, including the audited financial statements, for the year ended 31st December 2019, together with the reports of the directors, auditors, and the audit committee thereon be and are hereby accepted. Okay, busy. 
BC, thank you very much, BC. Will another shareholder please rise and second the motion? Sasani Wasu, thank you. I now put the motion to a vote. You have 20 seconds to vote. Please cast your votes. We'll proceed to vote on the resolution, the first resolution to receive the audited financial statements for the year ended 31st December 2019 and the reports of the directors, auditors and audit committee. Once again, A1 is for a yes vote, 2 slash B is for a no vote. Voting can now commence. Thank you. We have 15 seconds more. Five, two, one. Voting can now close. Thank you. We'll await the result. We are waiting for the result to be displayed, please. Thank you. The result is hereby displayed. For the first resolution on the audited financials, if we have um, 286 shareholders who have voted in favor, holding 15 billion shares, 448 million shares, 745, 766 shares, and representing 100%. Thank you. Thank you very much. Following the results of the voting as announced by the registrar, I hereby declare that the resolution to accept the annual reports and accounts, including the audited financial statements for the year ended 31st December 2019, together with the reports of the directors uh, auditors and audit committee their own has been passed. We now move to second item on the agenda which is declaration of a dividend. The board of directors has recommended that a dividend of 16 naira per share subject to the withholding tax be declared in respect of the year ended December 31st 2019 and made payable on uh, Tuesday the 18th, which is, sorry, I think it's Tuesday the 18th? 50, yeah. Tuesday, no, I, I think there's a mistake. 16th, yeah, 16th, 2020. So, yes, so, no, no, you, are, you know, you will get your money on Tuesday now. Are there any questions before the motion is put to the meeting? Okay, no. Since there are no further questions, we shall proceed. Yes, wait, that's how I said we will proceed. Would a shareholder kindly move that a dividend of 16 naira uh, per share subject to withholding tax be declared in respect of the ended, uh, you know, year ended 31st December 2019? Sir, sorry. Thank you, Sonny. Would another shareholder please rise and second the motion? Nona. All right. So, thank you very much, Nona. I now put the motion to a vote. You have 20 seconds to vote. Please cast your votes. Voting can now commence, please. Ten seconds more. Five, two, one. Voting can now close. Thank you. We will wait for the results.
Thank you. The result is hereby displayed. Um, on the second resolution, declaration of a dividend, we have 286 shareholders who have voted in favor, holding 15 billion 448 million. 745,768 shares and representing 100%. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. James. Following the results of the voting as announced by the Registrar, I hereby declare that the resolution to declare a dividend of 16 Naira per share in respect of the period ended December 31st, 2019 has been passed. The next item is the election of election and re-election of directors. Before we proceed further, I would like to mention that the Registrar of Directors uh, attending uh, attendance at the board meetings during the period under review is available for inspection in accordance with Section 258, Subsection 2 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act, CAF C20 LFN 2004. At this meeting, Biswanathan Shankar, Michael Davis, Sherry Blair, Dred Zagoni, and Sani Dangote are retiring from the board in compliance with Section 259, uh, Subsection 2 of the Companies and Allied uh, Matters Act, CAMA, CAP C20, LFN 2004, and being eligible have offered themselves, for, uh, have offered themselves up for re election. In addition, in the course of the year, Michael Pachakos uh, was appointed as the group managing director, while Abin Fatak was appointed as the deputy managing director. In compliance with Section 249, subsection, uh, 249 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act, CAMA, CAP C20 LFN 2004, their appointments are to be approved at this meeting. Are there any questions before the motion is put to the meeting? Since there are no further questions, we shall proceed. Re-election of Biswanathan Shankar. I hereby move that Mr. Biswanathan Shankar be and is hereby re-elected as a director of the company. Would another shareholder please rise and second the motion? BC. Thank you, BC. I now put the motion to a vote. You have 20 seconds to vote. Please cast your votes. The register will read. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We'll proceed to vote on the resolution. Voting can now commence. Fifteen seconds more. We'll do 10 seconds more. Five, three, two, one. Voting can now close, please. Thank you. We await the results. Thank you. The result is hereby displayed. Um, to re-elect the unappointed directors, Vaswana Tak Santa, we have 700 and 272 shareholders holding 15 billion, 344 million, 24,129 shares, representing 99.32% who are voted in favor. And we have 14 shareholders holding 104,721,639 shares, representing 0.68%. Thank you. Uh, 
Following the results of the voting as announced by the registrar, I hereby declare that the I mentioned 14 children. She did. She did. Following the results of the voting as announced by the registrar, I hereby declare that the resolution to elect Biswanathan Shankar as a director of the company has been passed. Re election of Michael Davis. I hereby move that Michael Davis be and is hereby re elected as a director of the company. Would another shareholder please rise and second the motion? Okay, Sir Sony also, thank you. I now put the motion to a vote. You have 20 seconds to vote. Please cast your, uh, I mean, the registrar will let you know what to do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We will now proceed on the voting session. We can commence the vote, please. Thank you. Fifteen seconds more, please. We have 10 seconds to go. We'll do five, three, two, one. Voting can now close, please. Thank you. So we await the results on the resolution to re-elect Michael Davis as director, who will be retiring by rotation this We await the results, please. Any problem? <laughs> Thank you. We have the results displayed. We have 272 shareholders who have voted in favor of this resolution and holding 15 billion, 344 million, 24,129 shares representing 99.32%. And we have 14 shareholders who have voted against the resolution and holding 104 million seven hundred and twenty one thousand six hundred and thirty nine shares representing seventy 
0.68% of the fully paid share capital. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. James Cole. Following the results of the voting as announced by the Registrar, I hereby declare that the resolution to re-elect Sir Michael Davis as a director of the company has been passed. Re-election of Ms. Sherry Blair, CVE, QC. I hereby move that Sherry Blair be and is hereby re-elected as a director of the company. Would another shareholder please rise to second the motion? Yes, Nona? Okay, Nona did. I now put the motion to a vote. You have 20 seconds to vote. Please cast your votes. The register. Register. Voting can now commence, please. Thank you. We have 15 seconds more. We'll do 10 now. Five. Three. Two. One. Voting can now close, please. Thank you. Expecting the results on the resolution for Cherry Blair. Thank you. The result is hereby displayed. You have 272 shareholders who have voted in favor and holding 15 billion 344 million 24,129 shares, representing 99.32 percent. And we have 14 shareholders who have voted against this resolution and holding 104 million 721 thousand. 639 shares and representing 0.68 percent. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, so now with the result, following the results of the uh, voting as announced by the register, I hereby declare that the, res uh, the resolution to re-elect Ms. Sherry Blair as the director of the company has been passed. Re-election of Dred Zagoni I hereby move that Dre Zagoni be and is hereby re-elected as a director of the company. Would another shareholder please rise and second this motion? BC. Thank you, BC Vakari. I now put the motion to a vote. You have 20 seconds to vote. Please cast your vote. Voting can now commence, please. Thank you. We'll do 15 seconds more. Ten more seconds. Five. Three. Two. One. We can now close the vote. Thank you. While we expect the results. On the election of Mr. Dowred. Zagoani as a director. Thank you. We'll await the results, please. Yes. Thank you. The result is hereby displayed. We have 272 shareholders who have voted in favor of the resolution and holding. 
fifteen billion three hundred and forty four million twenty four thousand one hundred and twenty nine shares representing ninety nine point thirty two percent and we have 14 shareholders who have voted against the resolution and hold it 104,721,639 shares and representing 0.68%. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, following the results of the voting as announced by the registrar, I hereby declare that the resolution to elect Dred Zogoni as a director of the company has been passed. Re-election of Sani Dangote, I hereby move that Sani Dangote be and is hereby re-elected as a director of the company. Would another shareholder please rise and second this motion. Sir Sani Owosu. Thank you, Sir Sani Owosu. I now put the motion to a vote. You have 20 seconds to vote. Please cast your votes. The voting can now commence, please. Thank you. The voting can start now. Can we open the vote? No, you haven't opened yet. Oh, sorry, sir. Okay. Can we start now? Can we start? You haven't opened it yet. Can we open the vote, please? Thank you. Yeah, we can vote now. Fifteen seconds more, please. Ten seconds. Five. Three, two, one. We can close the votes now. Thank you. So we're expecting the results on the re-election of Mr. Sani Dangote as a director. Thank you. The result is hereby displayed. We have 700 and 272 shareholders who have voted in favor and holding 15 billion, 344 million, 24,129 shares, representing 99.32%. And we have 14 shareholders who have voted against the resolution and holding 104,721,639 shares and representing 0.68%. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, here, uh, following the results of the voting as announced by the registrar, I hereby declare that the resolution to elect Sani Dangote as the director of the company has been passed. The appointment of Michael Fuchakos, I hereby move that Michelle Fuchakos be and is hereby appointed as a director of the company. Would another shareholder please rise and second this motion? Sir Sunny? Okay. You second. Okay. I now put the motion to a vote. You have 20 seconds to vote. Please cast your votes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The voting can now commence. Please open the vote. Please open the vote.
They haven't opened it yet. We're expecting the vote to be open, please. We are waiting for the voting process to commence. Okay. Thank you. Can okay. we? Yes, we can go ahead. Let's proceed with the votes, please. We have 30 seconds. Can we press our keypads, please? The devices. We'll do 15 seconds more. Hmm? I did. Oh. 10 seconds more. Five, three, two, one. We can close the vote, please. Let voting end. Thank you. We await the result on the appointment for Mr. Mitchell Pucheros as a director. Thank you. The result is hereby displayed. We have 273 shareholders who have voted in favor of this resolution and hold it 15 billion 368 million 979,072 shares, representing 99.48%. And we have 13 shareholders who have voted against the resolution and holding 79 million 806,696 shares and representing 0.52%. Thank you. Thank you. Following the results of the voting as announced by the registrar, I hereby declare that the resolution to appoint Michel Fichakos as the director of the company has been passed. Appointment of Arvin Patak, I hereby move that Arvin Patak be and is hereby appointed as the director of the company. Would another shareholder please rise and second the motion? BC. BC second the motion. Thank you, BC. I now put the motion to a vote. You have 20 seconds to vote. Please cast your votes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The voting process can now commence, please. Can we open the vote? Thank you. The session has been opened. You can vote, sir? Yes, we can, sir. We will have 15 seconds more to press our devices. 10 seconds more. Five seconds. Are we expecting the screen again? Because we didn't close the vote. Did we all press that? Okay, yeah. So we'll do five seconds more, please. We'll go. Okay. Three seconds. Hmm? Two, one second. Please, we can stop the vote. Thank you.
We're expecting the results on the appointment of Mr. Arvind Patank as a director. The result is hereby displayed. We have 273 shareholders who have voted in favor of the resolution and holding 15 billion. 368,939,072 shares representing 99.48%. We have 13 shareholders who have voted against this resolution and holding 79,806,696 shares representing 0.52%. Thank you. Thank you. Following the results of the voting as announced by the Registrar, I hereby declare that the resolution to appoint Arvind Patak as the director of the company has been passed. Dear shareholders, I hereby present Viswanathan Shankar, Michael Davis, Sherry Blair, Dred Zagoni, Sani Dangote, Michelle uh, Fukachos, and Arvind Patak. Please join me in congratulating our newly appointed and our re-elected directors while we wish them the best in the service of our company. Michelle, you want to say a word? You want to thank on behalf of the shareholders, on behalf of the directors? <clears throat> thank you, Chairman. Thank you, my fellow board members, esteemed shareholders, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of myself and my fellow directors, we thank and appreciate you for the great honor and responsibility that you have bestowed us on us today. We promise that we shall continue to do our best in positively repositioning Dangote Cement PLC as an industry leader in all frontiers under the leadership of the chairman. This is despite the many challenges, including the present coronavirus-19 pandemic impact on the business environment. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michelle. Congratulations once more. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the remuneration of, uh, for the directors. The directors are proposing the sum of 5 million naira for the chairman and 4 million naira per annum for each non-executive director. These are the same amounts as in the preceding year. Are there any questions before the motion is put to the meeting? Okay. Since there are no further questions, uh, we shall proceed. Would a shareholder kindly move that the remuneration of the chairman of 5 million naira and that of the remuneration of the non-executive director of 4 million naira for each of the non-executive directors for the year uh, ending December 31st, 2020, B, and is hereby approved. Sir Sani Omosu. As indicated by the chairman, I this annual report, I second the motion. Thank you very much, Sir Sani Omosu. Would another shareholder please rise and second the motion? Busy. Thank you. BC. Are there any questions before the motion is put to the meeting? Mr. Chairman, yes. Let me just quickly correct myself because since uh, she said my voice is recorded. Okay. So I'd like to say I know. Okay, so she seconded. Thank you. Since there are no further questions, we shall proceed. I now put the motion to a vote. You have 20 seconds to vote. Please cast your votes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Voting can now commence, please. Can it? Okay. We can now start. Hmm. We are voting on the resolution to approve the remuneration of directors. Ten seconds more. Five, three, two, one. Voting can now close, please. Thank you. We await the result.
the results is hereby displayed. We have 286 shareholders voting in favor of the resolution and holding 15 billion. 448,745,768 shares, representing 100%. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Following the results of the voting as announced by the registrar, I hereby declare that the resolution that the remuneration of the chairman of 5 million naira and that of uh, that uh, the resolution uh, remuneration of the non-executive directors of 4 million naira for the year ending December 31st, 2020, be approved and has been passed. Next on the item of the, uh, 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 next is the, uh, next on the agenda is the remuneration of the auditors. Section 361, subsection 1, uh, subsection B of the Companies and Allied Motors Act requires that the remuneration shall be fixed by the company in general meeting or in such manner as the company in general meeting may determine. Are there any questions before the motion is put to the meeting? Since the yeah, that will be negotiated by the management. Yeah. Uh, I can assure you it will be even lower than what we were paying before. Thank you. <laughs> we'll discuss that. Uh, since there are no further questions, we shall proceed. Would a shareholder kindly move that the directors be and are hereby authorized to fix the remuneration and expenses of the auditors in respect of the year end, ending December 31st, 2020? Nona, you move. Thank you. Would another shareholder please rise and second the motion? B.C. Bakari, thank you. I now put the motion to a vote. You have 20 seconds to vote. Please cast your votes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Voting can now commence, please. Voting has started. Fifteen seconds more, please. Ten seconds. Five seconds. Three, two, one. Voting can now close. Thank you. So we are waiting the results on um, authorizing the directors to fix the remuneration of the auditors. Thank you. We have the results now. We have 286 shareholders voting in favor of the resolution, and we have 15 billion 448 million 745,768 shares, representing 100 percent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, following the results of the voting as announced, by the registrar, I hereby declare that the resolution to authorize the directors to fix the remuneration and expenses of the auditors in respect of the year ending December 31st, 2020 has been passed. Agenda item number six, section 357 of Karma states that at any general meeting, a retiring auditor, however, however appointed, shall be reappointed without any resolution being passed unless he is not qualified for reappointment. In addition, Rule 33.2 of the SEC Code requires that external uh, audit firms shall be retained for no longer than 10 years continuously. At this AGM, the current auditors would have, would have completed the uh, 10 years of their tenure. 
Therefore, a new auditor must be appointed. In view of this, your board, I mean, your board carried out a vigorous bidding process overseen by the committee statutorily responsible for this function and has eventually appointed KPMG Professional Services as your new auditors to replace your outgoing joint auditors, Deloitte and Ahmed Zakari and Co. Are there any questions before the motion is put to the meeting? Okay, since there are no further questions, we shall proceed. Would a shareholder kindly move that KPMG Professional Services be appointed to replace the retiring joint auditors? Sasani Mosu. Okay, would another shareholder please rise and second the motion? No, no, I will. Thank you. I now put the motion to a vote. You have 20 seconds to vote. Please cast your votes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We can now commence the voting process and open the votes. Thank you. 20 seconds. We'll do 15. 10. Five seconds more. Three. Two, one. We can close the vote, please. Thank you. We're expecting the results to appoint KPMG professional services to replace the retired auditors. <coughs> the result is hereby displayed. We have 286 shareholders who have voted in favor and all holding 15 billion four hundred and forty eight million seven hundred and forty five thousand seven hundred and sixty eight shares and representing hundred percent. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Ms. James Cole. Following I mean following the results of the voting as announced by the registrar. I hereby declare that the resolution to appoint KPMG Professional Services as your new auditors to replace your outgoing joint auditors Deloitte and Ahmed Zakari has been passed. Thank you. Agenda item number seven. The next item on the agenda is the election of the members of the audit committee. Section 359, subsection 4 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act, CAMA, CAP C20, LFN, 2004 provides that a maximum of six members of the audit committee consisting of three directors and three representatives of the shareholders be elected at an annual general meeting. The act further provides that in case in the case of election of shareholders representatives nominations should be received not later than 21 days before the date of the meeting. The Board of Directors have nominated the following three directors for election as members of the Audit Committee. Mr. Ernest Ebi, MFR, Mr. Olakule Alake, and Mr. Emmanuel Ikazowo. Since the Board has made the valid nomination as required by Section 359, Subsection 4, there is no need to vote on them. I hereby declare that the three directors are hereby appointed as members of the Audit Committee of Dangote Cement PLC. Ladies and gentlemen, there are three more seats to be filled in accordance with the Companies and Allied Matters Act, CAP C 2011 2004, on the Audit Committee. As at May 25, 2020, 35 nominations were received by the company secretary from the shareholders for election as members of the Audit Committee. Of course, that two candidates have withdrawn their nominations. The remaining nominations, therefore, are one, Mr. Robert Ade Odiachi. Number two is Mr. Sharif Yusuf Mojirola. Number three is Mr. Nicholas Nyamali. Are there any questions before the motion is put to the meeting? Thank you. Since there are no further questions, we shall proceed. Since there are three valid nominations as required by law, 
will the shareholder kindly move that Mr. Robert Ade Odiachi, Mr. Sheriff Yusuf Mojirola, and Mr. Nicholas Nyamali be and are hereby elected as members of the audit committee to serve until the conclusion of the next AGM. Okay, be seated. All right. There is no point moving a motion for the shareholders' representative. What we need to do here, since there is no contestant, is to merge both that of the board and that of shareholders and move a single motion for it. So, because moving a separate motion means that you are separating them. They are now a committee. So. I advise that you mention the names of the directors and their, their own names so that we just give you a motion to right. cement it. Thank you. Noted. So since there are three valid, uh, you know, nominations that were, you know, as required by uh, law, would a shareholder kindly move that Mr. Ade, Robert Odiachi, Sheriff Yusuf Mojirola, Mr. Nicholas Nyamali B, and are hereby elected members of the audit committee to serve until the conclusion of the... It was the director's representative. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So, BC. Thank you very much. Will another shareholder please rise and second this motion? No, no. Will all those in favor of this motion please signify by... No. Uh, by raising your hands, yes. Okay, you have already raised your hands. Would anyone objecting? <laughs> okay. As there are no objections, uh, motions, I hereby declare that Mr. Robert Ade Odiachi, Mr. Sharif Yusuf Mojirola, Mr. Nicholas Nyamali, Mr. Olakule Alake, Mr. Ernest Ebi, Mr. Emmanuel Ikazobo B and are hereby elected as members of the audit committee until the conclusion of the next AGM. Uh, dear shareholders, I hereby present to you the members of the audit committee who will serve until the uh, conclusion of the next AGM. They are Mr. Ernest A.B. MFR, Mr. Olakule Alake, Mr. Emmanuel Ikazobo, Mr. Robert Ade Udiachi, Mr. Sharif Yusuf Mojirola and Mr. Nicholas Nyamali. Please join me in congratulating members of the audit committee while wishing them the best in the service of our company. Ladies and gentlemen, we have, yes. Sorry, Chairman, before we close the meeting, I want to draw your attention uh, to the role that some persons have played for us to be where we are. Uh, I think that this is proper, uh, since I noticed it, that I should also mention it. Uh, the first set of account that was released, there were some errors. Uh, and it's not very usual or natural for the team that prepared for the AGM to be the one detecting their mistakes and correcting them before the day of the AGM. Uh, I don't know who and the team involved, but I think it should be put on record that that itself shows some level of responsibility and they should be commended uh, for detecting their own mistakes because, like I said, the first set I, I got, uh, I noticed some mistakes and by the time I, I was here this morning and I took another account and I tried to compare what the first account was vis-a-vis -vis the second I saw that those errors uh, had disappeared, and I'm hoping that after this AGM, COVID-19 will also disappear, just like those mistakes disappeared. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Le hmm? Yeah, uh, the audit committee chairman, do you want to thank the shareholders for reappointing you? Um, 
my fellow shareholders, on behalf of the members of the audit, statutory audit committee, I want to thank you for the trust and confidence bestowed on us today. And um, I assure you that we will discharge all responsibilities and obligations that this position requires diligently and to the best of our ability. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Robert Adeo Diachi. Uh, no, I'm not talking. You are not the chairman oh, of the to. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, yes, I just, because while you were talking, you said the attendance book of uh, the audit committee is there for me to inspect. The reason I raised that issue was just to inform you and the Secretariat that in the line of attendance of committees, the audit committee was not listed in this annual report. And it's very important for shareholders to know the number of meetings held. So since I pushed you that way, and I felt that you did not really get the point I was making. So subsequently, okay. they must ensure that the meetings of audit committee is also in the corporate uh, report, which include that of the board committees and all this and that, so that shareholders will see it. And, okay. Uh, yeah. It will be done. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we have actually come to the end of the agenda. On behalf of the board, I thank you for your attendance at this meeting and wish to express our appreciation for, the, for your continued interest and support of our company over the years. You may proceed to take your leave after the closing prayers and also national anthem. Can, uh, you know, Sir Sani also give us a closing prayer and then uh, we have the national anthem. Please, shall we rise for the opening prayer? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Mr. Chairman, this occasion is always used to also celebrate you by singing happy birthday to you. But the COVID-19 has created a lot of gap in everything. But however, I pray Almighty God to give you a good life, good health, sound mind and body to continue to serve mankind and humanity. I pray that this meeting that we have heard, Father, everything we have discussed here, you will bless it and grant the management the wisdom and knowledge to make good use of all the advices we have given here. I also pray that for the directors, may God continue to rekindle you with good health, knowledge that you will use to move the company forward and understanding, encouragement, and everything because the pandemic itself will not in any way be our portion in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that those shareholders who are unable to come here today, that they will also be in our prayers, that may God continue to keep them safe wherever they are. We pray that by the grace of God, our country, Nigeria, will move forward and will continue and will be a blessing to all of us. If it's not yet, but God will touch the mind of the leaders for this country to be a blessing to all of us. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, directors. Thank you, all parties consigned and my fellow shareholders. In Jesus' special name, I pray the grace of God will live with us and continue to be with us in Jesus' name. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. National anthem, please.